So hey guys, and um, welcome to another video of the Random Watch Dude. And uh, and today it's a it's a glorious hot sunny day uh, here in Auckland. I've got as you can see I've got the sun hat on. I couldn't possibly do without it on a day like today. It's about 28 degrees here in the southern hemisphere. Uh, sorry to those of you in the northern hemisphere that uh, that I think are, in, are probably enduring some some much colder temperatures than we are here. But uh, hey, you've you've had your go, guys. Uh, you've had your go, and now it's our turn to have uh, have the summer down here in the southern hemisphere. So. I'll make the most of it whilst we've got it. Um, just a quick wristwatch check. I'm, today I'm wearing my uh, Rolex GMT Master 2. Uh, this is the BLNR or the Batgirl, uh, the Batman, the Bruce Wayne, whatever you want to call it. So I've got that on today. Um, really enjoying wearing it again. I've had it off the wrist for, for about three or four weeks now. And it's nice sometimes, isn't it, to take a watch out of the rotation and uh, and just you know put it away and, and forget about it for two or three weeks. And then when you put it back on again, I think it's, it's, uh, it's almost like a little adrenaline buzz all over again isn't it when you put a watch like this back on again after not wearing it for a while uh, but to the point guys I wanted to make a, a video today just a follow-up video really uh, to the video actually uh, the video that I made recently with regards to uh, you know the best the best uh, one watch that that kind of rules them all if you like you know the uh, the exit watch I, I after I made that video I, I put a poll out on the channel and the question was, uh, of these five uh, watch brands, which of them makes the best dress watch, the best dress watch range was the question, not just the best individual dress watch model, but the actual range of dress watches. And I got some really interesting responses. So the, the five uh, brands that I put up uh, in, the, in the poll were Grand Seiko, Cartier, Rolex, IWC, and Jeger Lecoutre. And for the purpose of this video, rather than me have to say Gégé Lecoutre every time, sounds like a Bond villain, doesn't it? It's a great, I think it's a great name for a watch brand, Gégé Lecoutre. Uh, we'll call them JLC. As, as we call I, IWC, which is actually the international watch company, we call them IWC. We'll call Gégé Lecoutre, uh, and I promise it's the last time I do that, we'll call them JLC. So the, the results are in, guys. We had uh, getting on for 150 of you voted, so thank you very much for that. And I think, I think 150 is a very, very fair kind of representation uh, of, of votes uh, from from the watch public, if you like. And I'm going to give you the uh, the results because the results, as as they did in the in the uh, poll that I did recently with regards to the best, you know, what's what's the best one watch uh, exit watch, if you like. This result, in fact, this result staggered me even more than that one, where in that poll, you know, the exit watch uh, voted by yourselves was the Rolex Submariner, with a whopping 73% of the vote, I might add, up against the Tudor Pelagos and uh, and the Amiga Seamaster. So this this vote was actually even more kind of a surprise to me than, than that one was. And I'll give you the results um, in order. Grand Seiko, uh, of the 150 nearly people that voted, Grand Seiko garnered 11% of the vote. Now that surprised me actually, 11, 11%, you know, just over one in 10 people voted for Grand Seiko. Um, Cartier, Cartier got 27% of the vote, which is, you know, that's probably about where I expected Cartier to land, you know, somewhere around the, you know, the 20 to 30% mark. Cartier, of course, are, are most famous for one particular model, which is the, the tank. And, um, and I think if you don't like the tank, you know, the rest of the Cartier range is, is a bit of a struggle really, isn't it? And excuse the helicopter in the background because he tends to want to fly by as soon as I start to make a video, as he is now. Um, number three, guys, Rolex. So this, here's an interesting one. Rolex finished on 10%. Now that was a surprise to me as well. So, so if it was a surprise that Grand Seiko only got 11% of the vote, it's even more of a surprise to me that for dress watches, Rolex uh, only got 10%. Only one in 10 of you uh, thought that Rolex made the best dress watch range. IWC came in at a shocking 1%, and I'm sorry, I, d I don't know, I I'd never expected it to be that low. I thought IWC had some fans out there for dress watches, but IWC came in with a shocking f uh, 1%. And even more shocking than the 1% for IWC, in my view, is the JLC. Uh, JLC won, won this poll, guys, um, you know, at a canter with 51% of the vote. I think that's incredible. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but 51% of the vote went to JLC when they're up against Grand Seiko, Cartier and Rolex as well. Fantastic. So JLC is the clear winner. And 
Grand Seiko and Rolex, you know, for me, uh, both both of those results, 10% and 11% respectively, those results are a real surprise to me. But at the same time, um, you know, maybe maybe we've all got to a stage where you know we sort of believe the hype and the marketing so much, and I've stopped appreciating the watches. And I think what this is what this poll has has taught me is that there are a hell of a lot out of you of you out there. Um, that really appreciate some of the watch brands that we talk about a lot less and JLC is clearly is clearly one of those you know I mean to a degree Grand Seiko and, and Rolex have been left fighting over the scraps on this haven't they um, you know compared to Cartier and JLC um, Cartier for me uh, like I say I, I think you know Cartier are famous for one one model really which is the tank uh, although I don't, I don't deny that they have a fantastic history in watchmaking, and uh, you know, and they do make some other really, really nice watches as well. Uh, but I think most of us out there, you know, are very, very familiar with the tank and and not, not really much about any of the other models. Um, and it's got me thinking, guys, actually, because I have been thinking lately about adding a like a dress watch or a formal watch to my collection. Um, and I didn't really want it to be a Rolex, and I was thinking about Grand Seiko actually. You know, what what uh, having made a video recently on Grand Seiko, you know, I was thinking to myself, yeah, I think Grand Seiko might be an appropriate, uh, you know, brand if you like to add add to my collection as a as a formal dress watch. And I was kind of obviously starting to look at the uh, the quartzes and the spring drives. And this this polls really helped me. It's, and thank you to you guys. You know, it's really guided me and to a degree influenced me. You know, to start looking at uh, JLC in a lot more detail because I think with JLC, you know, I'm very very familiar with the Reverso, and uh, you know that that's obviously the I don't know the marquee um, flagship model in in the JLC dress watch range, if you like. That's that's the model that they're most famous for. And even the, the uh, dress watch lay people like myself are, are very familiar with the Reverso. But look, I'll be totally honest with you guys, the Reverso just doesn't do it for me. It, I, I kind of, I don't like the shape, I just don't like rectangular watches for one. Um, and, and the other thing is, uh, with most reversos, you know, they don't actually have a like a a, a, a watch a, a face on both sides. Most of the uh, lower end reversos, they just have a plain back. And I'm kind of thinking, what's the point? You know, um, I think what I'd like to see with a reverso, if JLC ever to, were to do anything with the reverso that's different, I'd, I'd love to see JLC actually um, make. To, this may sound a little bit freaky, guys, but actually turn the reverso into a pocket watch. Uh, option as well in other words actually be able to pop the whole the whole face off um, out of the out of the bracelet and actually have it as a pocket watch maybe in your in your uh, you know in your top shirt pocket or something like that that would be fun you know just to be able to say that you know you've got a watch that's on a bracelet like you know like this GMT but I can actually pop the pop the mechanical movement and the face out of it leave the bracelet on um, and actually convert the uh, you know the actual time computing device into a into a um, into a pocket watch, and I think that would be fun. Uh, and that's that's the kind of thing I'd like to see. You know, if if I were to go for something like the reverse, I'd like to see a little bit more than just a rectangular watch that has a bit of a, a gimmicky, you know, kind of flip over aspect to it, mechanical flip over to it. So that's that's my view on the reverso, anyway. Um, so I, I've had a look, and I'm I'm kind of thinking that it's, you you guys haven't just voted for JLC purely because of the reverso. I don't think there are that many reverso fans out there. Um, I think there are two two things uh, that have made you vote for the. That sounds like a sounds like an old plane flying over now. Um, there are two things that have made you vote uh, for JLC. One uh, is actually just the horological history of JLC. They've got a very very deep and complex horological history. Uh, they they have always made, and even I know this as somebody who's not really familiar with JLC in any great detail. They they have made some phenomenal movements over the decades. Uh, they've got a very, very long uh, history steeped uh, in, you know, mechanical, I guess, perfection with their with their movements, going back many, many, many years. And uh, and and the thing I've always known about JLC, even as a layperson, is that they do make exceptionally reliable movements. So that's uh, that's one of the reasons that I'm now really taking JLC quite seriously as a as an option. Uh, because of their their movement prowess, if you like, uh, and the other side of it is um, there are a couple of models that I've been looking at uh, on their on their website, and I'm gonna I'm actually gonna be going into my AD soon to try a couple of these on. I've had a look at the uh, the it's, it's actually a dive watch. It's the Polaris range, the dive watch. 
although it's a dive watch without an external bezel. So it kind of um, crosses the boundary between dive watch and formal watch for me because although they've called it a diver's watch, there's no rotatable bezel on there. So from a distance, it does actually look like a dress watch. So I want to go and try that out. I want to go and have a look at the Polaris and see what I think of it actually on the wrist. I, I think I might like it. Although aesthetically, just looking at it, the pictures of it on the internet, I'm also looking at it and thinking, is it a bit dull? If I'm honest with you, is it is it just a little bit um, lacking in character and a little bit boring? So I, I I will only really know that when I when I put one of those on the wrist, which is my intention to do that quite soon. Uh, and the other watch that's really caught, or the other range of watches that JLC make that's really caught my eye, uh, is the Master Control range. Now. Um, uh, a few years ago, I had a I had a Grand Seiko SBGR261. Um, I put a few pictures of that up on the up on a Facebook group, um, and uh, and a couple of people came back and said, "Oh, that's really cool. That looks like the JLC uh, Master Control." And I thought, "Well, whew, you know, I thought I thought this was a very original design by Grand Seiko. Actually, I, I don't know if I like you know somebody saying, oh, it's a copy of a JLC.'" But lo and behold. Um, I think it was. I think the JLC Master Control, which is a model which is which has got a very very long history and was without question, you know, the original version of itself, if you like. Um, it's a lovely looking watch. It's very simple. Um, it's got a blued seconds hand, which just gives it that little pop of of colour, which is what you want on a dress watch. And what I like about the Master Control also is that they do actually do some, uh, as well as just a time only, they do a date, but they also do this crazy chronograph calendar. And I really like it. I, I've, I've only seen it on the internet, guys, but I'm really liking the look of this. So it's a, it's a dress watch, a Master Control dress watch. Uh, it's got a chronograph function, uh, a calendar, and it's also got a pulsometer. So uh, the, the bezel around the outside uh, actually has the, the markings for you to take your pulse rate. Uh, how practical is that in this day and age? You know, who needs... I, ha I made a, a video recently about the tachymeter bezel on the Speedmaster and, what, you know, the fact I thought it was kind of a, a bit pointless nowadays. And uh, I don't think you could get any more practical than a pulsometer uh, on, a, on a mechanical watch, could you? So I really like the look of the, um, the JLC. And I'm just going to round this vid video off now, guys, by just saying thank you. Thank you for uh, answering the poll and for steering me in the direction. This is... This is uh, you influencing me now uh, to start looking at uh, the JLC range and in particular the Polaris and the Master Control. I'll be going into my AD over the next week or so. Uh, I'm actually looking to possibly go in there as early as Monday in the next couple of days. Uh, take a look at these models, uh, probably take some pictures and, um, and, and maybe share another video later down the track and, and just let you know what my thoughts were uh, on, these, uh, on these models. So, uh, so thanks guys, uh, that's the end of this video. Uh, like I say, I'll be doing a follow-up video uh, with, my, with my thoughts on actually, you know, how I feel about the JLC range of watches actually on my wrist. I think that'll be really interesting. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like the video and you like the content, please like the video and please do subscribe if you haven't already. Subscriptions really, really help me uh, to stay committed to making more videos. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Cheers, guys.